Now, actually, when I talk about this, there was something which was maybe more positive, mm -hmm. which showed me that, as I've said, mm. clinical practice was pointless mm -hmm. to me, at mm. least as far as I was concerned. Mm. And I felt that um, um, even without, I, I didn't have public health training at that time, mm -hmm. but I felt that many times as doctors, we are so focused on the illness. Right. Not even the person, mm -hmm. you know, the illness. Mm -hmm. Somebody has pneumonia and mm -hmm. you want to pump them with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're not asking yourself, how did this person get pneumonia? Mm. You have a baby who has malaria and you're more concerned about, I should transfuse them because they have severe anemia. I should treat them with, I don't mm -hmm. know, whichever treatment. And you're not asking yourself, how did this child get malaria to, to get to this point? The circumstances, mm. the environment, mm. the, 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 you know, how people live. Mm. We're not trained that way mm. as doctors. You're trained, as I've said, an algorithm. Mm. You have fever for mm. how long? Mm. You know, mm. what does it, when does it mm. come? Mm. You have headache. Mm. So there are those things, but not why do you have fever? Mm. Why did you get malaria? Mm. So the positive experience, mm -hmm. and every time I talk about this, I get emotional because mm. it was mm. like um, life changing mm. in my outlook mm -hmm. towards medical practice. Mm -hmm. So there was a time when I think it was the El Nino, the El Nino of um, 1999. In Uganda. In Uganda. Mm. That's the first time I had the word El Nino. I never heard of it. Mm. So, um, either 1999 or 2000, mm -hmm. I always confuse <laughs> the years. Mm. So, we had a horrible, horrible, horrible malaria mm. epidemic mm -hmm. in that in that part. Mm. Like things which had, we had never seen so many malaria cases, mm. so many severe cases of malaria. Mm. So, malaria in children, um, when it's not treated, because the way malaria works in your system, it enters your red blood cells mm. and the malaria parasite starts multiplying. Mm -hmm. Now, when there are too many parasites, the blood cells burst, mm. the red blood cells, mm -hmm. they burst. Mm -hmm. So if you don't treat malaria for a long time mm. and all these red blood cells keep on bursting, mm. then you don't have enough red blood cells to transport oxygen. Right. So you end up with severe anemia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of children who die from Malaria, they either die from severe anemia mm -hmm. or they get cerebral malaria, which affects the brain or something. Mm -hmm. Most of the babies, that's mm -hmm. what kills them. Mm -hmm. But severe anemia mm -hmm. is like one of those things. Mm -hmm. So a child with severe anemia, you would be sitting in your consultation room mm -hmm. and you, you'd hear them grunting mm -hmm. and they get, mm -hmm. you know, you could hear the grunt once they, they come out of the matatu that dropped them at the gate. You could hear them like um, even 100 meters away, mm -hmm. grunting. Mm -hmm. And so when you had the child grunting, mm. you knew either it was pneumonia mm. or anemia. Mm. But since we're in this El Nino induced mm. malaria outbreak, we knew mm. that these are severe anemia cases. Mm. So when, when you, once you hear the, the child grunting, you don't even wait mm. to let them go to triage, I don't know what, mm. you just come out, you look at the child, the child is literally limp, mm. like half dead. Mm. And you just rush them and mm. you try to save their life. <clears throat> So how do you save their life? You you don't you don't need to ask too many questions. You can just look at do this and you see like the child is paper white. Mm. You don't need to check how, what kind of how hemoglobin they have in their blood. You just know this one. Mm. We have like thirty minutes mm. to get it right, otherwise mm -hmm. they will be dead. Mm. So shave the head, look for a blood vessel. Mm. Fingers crossed, you mm. get it. Mm -hmm. At that time. You, we always had all positive blood. Actually, when we went to the blood bank, we always got all positive blood mm. because we know all positive you can give mm. anyone. Mm. We never wanted any other blood group mm. because there was no time mm. in many in many circumstances mm. to cross match and see mm. which is the best blood for this person. So mm. we always got all positive. Mm. So this this particular during this pandemic, this epidemic, one woman comes in with a half dead baby mm -hmm. boy mm. called Kazora. Still remember the name. Mm -hmm. And so you, 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 you set into this like life-saving mode, mm. shave the head, mm. look for a blood vessel, we couldn't even get one. Mm. We used to use, um, there's a very big blood vessel here. If you're like desperate, like yeah. this is your lifesaver, mm -hmm. put um, mm. something there. Mm. Then the woman, I, they bring the blood, mm -hmm. you're like rushing. The woman says, no, 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 you cannot transfuse my child. Mm -hmm. That I need permission from my husband before you can transfuse the uh -oh. baby. We used to though, I say, my friend, get out of this room. <laughs> Stop wasting our time. We're trying to save a life here. This woman insists and says, you cannot transfuse my baby. Without my, my husband's husband. permission. So I tell her, you know what? Sheesh. We're going to transfuse the baby. If the baby dies and your husband comes, it's, it's so nice. that, they, that they, he's going to talk to me. 
if the baby survives, he's going to talk to me. You just imagine like <laughs> in your mind, you, the clock is ticking because this baby is like the eyes are, have rolled and they are frothing at the mouth and they're just like gasping and you don't have time to waste in this kind of There is no time to be waiting for a husband. I'm who telling is you, who's going treatable. to come the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, anyway, by the time your husband comes, if you don't trust the baby will be dead. So yeah. make up your mind. Mm. So the, I said, whatever, just go, mm. go, 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 go. Mm. We're going to do this. Mm. So we put up this blood and luckily we get the blood running and i talked about tb being a rewarding disease to treat mm -hmm. like transfusing a dying baby mm. was one of the most rewarding things because one hour later they would find back. this baby breastfeeding <sighs> like literally from the jaws of death this baby was like dead half dead they were at and the then, cradle literally literally uh, you put yeah. the blood it runs if they survive the first 10 minutes, the first 15 minutes, the first 30 minutes, they are seeing the grave. Now normal. here they are back. They sleep. Then one hour later, they wake up and you find this little thing sitting. Oh my goodness. Like breastfeeding, like nothing has happened. <laughs> so this is what happened with this little boy called mm. Kazora. Mm. <clears throat> and the baby wakes up and is there breastfeeding. So in the evening, I'm doing the ward round and mm. the mother is there. Mm -hmm. She looks at me and she says, Doctor, you saved my, you saved my baby's life. I was like, you see, you're there arguing about blood transfusion and all this and that. So you said, hey, but you know, the reason I didn't want blood transfusion. This is my fifth baby and all the other four are dead. And two of them were transfused. Mm -hmm. And the others, and it's the same illness. She didn't even know it was malaria. She said it's the same illness. So I'm like, okay, so why do you think, do you, do you think it's the blood that killed them? He says, I don't know, but I think it's the blood transfusion that killed them. I said, were they normal <laughs> before they were transfused? They were sick, right? Mm. He says, yes, they were sick. Mm. So they were being transfused mm. because they were very sick. Mm. So what killed them is not the transfusion. Mm. What killed them is the illness mm. that required the transfusion. Mm. This man said, this is the first time any of my children has gotten this illness and oh they've recovered. Goodness. Like, okay, fair enough. So of course the next day the husband comes and he comes and says, yeah, they told me transfuse my child. You don't like transfusion because two of my children died, but I'm so happy this one survived. So long story short, we get to the point of discharge. Mm. So I sit down with this woman and I explain malaria, mm. what happens, why, mm. all these things, what you, what you need to do. Mm. That was the time when bed nets were coming on to the market as a public health mm. measure for preventing mm. malaria. Mm. So I said, you need to buy a bed net. Mm. Now, a bed net was $10 equivalent. Mm. I remember it was 10,000 mm. Uganda shillings at that time, mm. which was about $10. Mm. That's now, a thousand Kenyan shillings for the Kenyan viewers. Yes. Um, mm. Yeah, but that was then. That mm. was a lot of money. Mm. That's a, that's expensive. Yeah, and yeah. As, I, as I've said earlier, that's mosquito net. That was a mosquito about. net. Yeah, it wasn't even the the insecticide treated mm. nets. Mm. This was just a bed net. Mm. And um, this family had accumulated a bill mm. from the admission mm -hmm. of the baby. Mm -hmm. And so, as I've said, this was a paying hospital, mm. and the father was really a peasant. Mm. He was like a laborer, casual laborer who worked in people's farms mm. and you know got food and. Mm. So even to pay the medical bill for them was very hard. And then now I'm telling them they need to buy a bed net. Hmm. So um, they, I, they, I sat down with the mother and the father and I told them, they say, how much is a bed net? I told them, they said, that's too expensive. We cannot it afford it. Yeah. So what happened because of the, the mother said like no one had ever saved any of her children. Mm. So she trusted me. She thought I was like mm. some kind of God or mm. something like that. So everything I told her, she mm. listened. Mm. Now, then we started the cycle. Mm -hmm. This boy, every single month, every single month, they would be in hospital with malaria. Every single month from the time they were discharged. However, they would come early. So as soon as the boy got fever, two days, they would be in hospital. And so he never got hospitalized again. Would treat him oral, you know, treatment that I'm mm. using, quinine, syrup, mm. Mm. and the boy would go home and mm. he would recover. One month later, he would be back. And every time people would say, huh, Kazola hasn't come this month. <laughs> what has happened? And sure enough, the next day, this boy would be in, in the outpatients. Because now they, they knew that if you delay treating malaria, mm. then the child would get sick, mm. they would get to the point of where they almost died. Mm. So they would come very, very quickly. So mm. the treatment was cheaper. So mm. before they even finished clearing the bill mm. for the admission, mm. they were adding more bills for, mm. for the outpatient. Mm. 
So one time I said, this is ridiculous. Like it happened maybe five or six times. Mm. Every month, this guy, this, this baby would come. Mm. I said, since it's hard for you guys to buy a bed net, let's postpone the payment of the medical bills. Mm -hmm. Now the money that you save, mm -hmm. buy a bed net. When you okay. finish buy a bed net, then mm. you can resume mm. paying the medical bills. Mm. So it was the father who would come mm. every time he got money. Mm. The mother, would, I wouldn't see him unless mm. uh, the baby was sick. Mm -hmm. So that was the last conversation I had with his family. And these people disappeared for about a year. And I would ask myself, what happened to Kazora? What happened to Kazora? What happened to Kazora? We even had like a community person. Can you find mm. out? He said, no, I tried to check, but I think the address they gave, mm. I don't know. Mm. What happened to Kazora? Everybody was puzzled. Mm. And of course, in my heart, I knew that he probably didn't make it. Mm. Like many other mm. babies who had not mm. made it. Mm. Then one time, I think it was a Saturday mm. morning, mm. I came in the outpatient. They came and told me that there's a patient. Mm. Um, because Saturday the outpatient was closed, so unless somebody came, we didn't, um, I didn't just come. Mm. I come in the outpatient, and who do I see? A toddler now, he was about three, like running up and down, climbing, falling down, shouting. And that was Kazora. And the mother had a new baby, a mm. girl. <laughs> As I said, when I talk about this, I get emotional mm. because. She, they were not sick. Mm. She had come to show me her second baby. Oh my goodness. Because she said in all her life, she had never had two babies at the same time. Oh. So not only did Kaz Kaz Kazora, Kazora survive, survive and thrive, and then she, now they She got... had the chance to have two babies at one point in time mm. in her whole life. Mm. Because one baby would die, she would mm. get pregnant, another one mm. would die. Because she had lost four before oh Kazora. Oh my goodness. I mean, every time I think about this, I'm oh. like, oh my God, I can see that image of this woman. There. The reason they were not coming is because Kazora was fine. Kazora was fine. And she was, she had a she had time good to get pregnancy pregnant and had another baby. Issues. This little girl was like two or three months old. Yeah. I was like, wow. She said, this doctor, we're not sick. Incredible. I just came to show you my daughter. And because to say thank you. I've never had two children at any point in time in my life. That is real. Oh. <laughs> so every time I think about this, that's when I said, my goodness, just imagine what a bed net did for this woman. Wow. A wow. bed net. Wow. 10,000 shillings, $10. What it did to this woman. She had wow. a chance to have two children mm. at mm. a single, at the mm. point in time. No, when you think about it, yeah. it's, it's um, maybe it's not a big deal, but for her, it was a big deal that one child had survived long enough for her to get pregnant and get a second one. But it took this <laughs> many. It took people-centered approach to, yeah, yeah. To, to medical practice. Yeah. So I asked myself, what am I doing? <laughs> that just that was like, I said, that, that was the positive thing that said, what am I really doing? It's not just about that. It's not just about you being able to prescribe quinine yeah. and um, transfuse a dying child. Mm. It's really that there's a system that allows this woman, okay, first of all, this information, yeah. that this woman can get information. She can understand what is malaria, what can she do about it. She can be given tools and tips to like take charge of her baby's life. Mm. And then um, healthcare financing is a big problem mm. because if we had insisted you have to pay the medical bills, mm. maybe we would have treated Kazon for two years. Mm. Maybe you would have died in one of the Malaya episodes. Mm. I don't. I don't really know. But that's when it, it struck me that I. I don't think it's. I think it's pointless to keep on prolonging people's lives who are going to die mm. if we don't change the environment in which mm. they live mm. and their life circumstances. Mm. So as I've said, I didn't even have public health training mm. at that time, mm. but it made sense to me mm. as a doctor working in a difficult mm. environment. Mm that it was more important for them not to get malaria. Whichever way, whatever it took, it was more important for them not to get malaria mm. than for me to sit and wait for them to come and keep on dishing out, mm. you know, quinine mm. syrup <laughs> every mm. month. Mm. So that was really, I, many times I say, if I ever write a book, that would be like a turning that point. Was the turning <laughs> that point. was the turning point in yeah. my life mm. where I felt like I, I would serve humanity better. Mm by getting out of a system mm. that has such a, like the, the pipeline is endless of mm. illness. Mm. It's an endless pipeline. Mm. It's an endless pipeline. Mm. So if, if I can do those things that are going to reduce the pipeline, maybe yeah. not cut it off, yeah. 
I think I'm, I'll serve humanity better. Yeah.